This video will show you how to perform single cell passaging of iPSCs. This is useful for a variety of different purposes, some of which are shown here. If you intend to differentiate your iPSCs into a specific cell type, you may need to seed them at a specific density, so it's very helpful to start with a single cell suspension. If you are subcloning your iPSCs, single cell passaging and then tracking the growth of colonies can allow you to be certain that each colony is derived from a single iPSC. Additionally, if you intend to perform flow cytometry, a single cell suspension is required. You may wish to use fax to purify your iPSCs after reprogramming based on their cell surface marker expression. Rock inhibitor is extremely important for single cell passaging of iPSCs as they have very low viability as single cells. However, it should not be used for prolonged periods as the cells may become reliant on it and can lead to the selection for unhealthy iPSCs. Absence of ROC inhibitor can result in high levels of cell death. This will be demonstrated by passaging both with and without ROC inhibitor. Before you start, ensure you have a six well plate coated with vitronectin and at least one well of confluent iPSCs. First thing you need to do is to prepare a working solution of E8 plus ROC inhibitor. You do this by diluting your 10 millimolar ROC inhibitor in E8 media, forming a 1 in 1000 dilution. Here, Luke is taking 5 mil of E8 media and adding it to a falcon tube. Now he is adding 5 microliters of rock inhibitor to the 5 mil of media. Now you're ready to begin the passaging process. Aspirate the media from the cell surface, then add 2 mil of PBS to wash the cells. Aspirate the PBS from the cell surface, then add 2 mil of triple E to the well. This is just one example of many single cell dissociation reagents that are available. For example, you could use Accutase instead. You then need to incubate the cells for 3 to 5 minutes at 37 degrees. After the incubation is complete, use a P1000 to gently pipette the cells up and down, breaking them up. You should be able to see the colonies breaking apart. Transfer your cells to a prepared falcon tube containing 6ml of E8 media. We are now dividing the cell suspension into two falcon tubes of equal volume. For the purposes of demonstration, half will be grown in E8 plus rock inhibitor and the other half will be grown without any rock inhibitor. Then centrifuge both tubes at 300 RCF for 3 minutes. After centrifuging, aspirate the supernatant from each of the tubes.
Then resuspend one of the falcon tubes in 2 mil of E8 and resuspend the other in 2 mil of E8 plus rock inhibitor. Make sure you do the resuspension thoroughly as any clumps of cells will make the cell count inaccurate. The next step is to perform a cell count. In this case, a small sample is taken from each of the tubes to perform a cell count using a nuclear counter. After doing the cell count, calculate how much of your cell suspension you require in order to seed 150,000 cells per well. Get your new vitronectin coated 6 well plates and aspirate vitronectin from the surface. From the cell count, we have calculated that we need 500 microliters of the E8 cell suspension in order to seed 150,000 cells per well. For the E8 plus rock inhibitor suspension, we need 800 microliters to seed at that same density. To make this up to 2 mil, we add 1.5 mil of E8 to one well of a 6 well plate and 1.2 mil of E8 plus rock inhibitor to one well from the other six well plate. Now, the calculated volume of cell suspension is added to each of the wells. Make sure to pipette the cells up and down again to ensure they are fully resuspended then add the required amount to each well. Then agitate the plate gently to ensure the cells are distributed evenly. There should now be 150,000 cells per well in each of the plates. Transfer the plates to an incubator overnight and then check the plates the following day. Here are some examples of some IPSCs that were passaged with Triple E and tortured for 24 hours without rock inhibitor. There is quite a lot of variation in morphology, including some that have managed to reform back into colonies. Here are some examples of IPSCs cultured with rock inhibitor. Since rock inhibitor promotes single cell survival, there are more cells present, they are more evenly distributed and have not formed colonies. After 48 hours, the cells grown without rock inhibitor have low survival rates, apart from those that have reformed back into colonies, such as those shown in the center here. This is in contrast to the IPSCs grown with rock inhibitor, 
which have formed a confluent sheet of cells, as single cell survival is much higher. 